Hello everyone, welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we begin with a Moonport Rekit. This is a resupply mission, but with containers for material kits. Uh, so it's just a normal pod, except I unlock these um, uh, Mark V resupply, uh, supply ready packs. Uh, they're non-RP0 because they're not priced right. They're actually too expensive, I think. Um, I need to, and I'm the one adjusting the prices for the USI Technologies stuff, so I'm probably going to end up making those cheaper. As far as their size, I don't know exactly how much volume a material kit is supposed to take, but assuming that it is in liters, uh, this is not, uh, I think, unreasonable. Uh, this tank of food, water, and oxygen has, um, if we add those together, maybe 12,000 liters. Uh, so this is a 1,250 liter container, and we actually have four of those containers on the side of the normal resupply vessel. Uh, currently they're empty, so they don't weigh much. Uh, of course, they would weigh more once we get over there, and we start... Uh, what I intend to do is uh, have engineers take off extra solar panels and, what you call it, RCS ports and stuff like that off of the station. But anyway, let's get started running Fiji 2-1 which is this rocket we are reasonably lined up with the moon yeah so this to simplify our station reduce the part count a little bit I hope that we have an engineer over there that has a wrench but in any case we can transfer one over I've also built an Orpheus 2 which is our crew transfer vehicle to the moon Assuming we don't use the transfer demon, uh, it is a lot quicker to use the, uh, a lot quicker to build the Orpheus 2. Uh, though we might just go with the combo of uh, sending a normal Orpheus to orbit, and then uh, and we have one of those built here, and then using transfer demon to transfer the crew over. We'll see about that. But the Orpheus only takes like 11 days to build on the Olympus rocket, which is pretty darn quick. It's a lot quicker than some of the other missions that I've got. Uh, I, actually, I think it would be 24 days if we didn't have like a pod already built. Uh, we had recovered the previous Orpheus too, so we already had one of those. I guess it's easily refurbished. But we've got 39 days for a Crewmaster A and then a Nerva refueler. Remember, we do have a Nerva stage in orbit just waiting to be refueled. And so I've created a Rhombus R, and you'll see that, and we'll talk about it once we get there, uh, building in 82 days. And that's an interesting rocket. Really, what I need for that rocket is RS-25s, but that'll come later. We haven't unlocked those yet. I guess it's worth pointing out the technologies that we have, sta uh, have here. Uh, Long-term habitation, actuators, large segmented solids, mature spa stage combustion, and large space planes. I think maybe long-term habitation isn't something that we need to prioritize. There's one engine deliberately turned off and uh, yeah I don't actually have the technology for RS-25s queued up here so we should do that. We have a lot of science. We've got 6,000 science sitting around. Okay staging and the J2 is lit it's possible that fairing separation wasn't uh, in the script. And now that we've passed 150 kilometers, I'm pretty sure it wasn't, so here we go. So this is what the resupply vessel looks like with the ready packs on it. Alright, we are about to reach orbit with uh, plenty of fuel in order to transfer to the moon in this stage, so no problems and shut down. Okay, and that ended cleanly. We have 0.47 degree relative inclination to the moon. Let's get the solar panels out. Okay, here we go, turning towards the node. And it's a pretty good transfer window. Uh, we will end up with about 7.8 degrees difference with the station. Okay, ignition. And off we go. So this is just mainly to clean up the station a little bit so it doesn't have so many RCS ports. Uh, that'll help with if we need to keep it stable because, you know, it was wiggling a bit 
and we could have smart ASS kill rotation if there weren't so many RCS ports on the station as it is. And of course, uh, we will probably want uh, something like this for our Earth orbit station because it too has uh, a lot of spare solar panels and that sort of thing. We could of course also pull those back into inventory, that's another way of dealing with it. And we do have inventory modules available now. Okay, and shut down. Our node was wandering anyway. Let's take a look. We probably need to use quite a lot of RCS in order to fix this. We do want the stage to just, just crash into the moon, so... Eventually, we should recycle these stages, but it takes too much to dock them up to a station right now. What we would want is actually if we had a Kerbal on here to convert this stage or whatever we could to material kits on the way or something like that. Okay, we do have the potential to launch more things, but I, but I believe I want to just get this, this done first, so let's just head all over there. We're not pressed for supplies really, but 66 days of food remaining, so we might as well get it done. Okay, we are free from the stage, and everything looks good. So, on we go. We probably should have sent more food than anything else, considering the gap between the food, water, and oxygen there. Yeah, we have a surplus of oxygen for some reason. Okay, and shut down. Okay, adjusting for closest approach distance. We'll still have quite a lot of relative velocity once we get there though. But it seems like it'll take about two minutes to burn that off. Because we're carrying the extra packs, we're not going to be delivering as much fuel to the station. Which is a problem because we've been using the station's fuel to refuel our, our lander craft. That was pretty good as far as retro burn, pretty much spot on. Yep, close approach distance is now just 100 meters. Uh, we'll time warp until we get closer to it, but then we need to go over there and check where this can best fit, since this is going to be somewhat more permanent because it has the material kit packages on it. And we do have a lot of these refueler vessels already docked. Okay, yeah, it took a while to load when we entered physics range, or, yeah, whatever range it is, at 2.25 kilometers, and there is more lag. Let's go over there. Yeah, we've got the transfer demon docked over there. This resupply vessel could probably go now. This one has a lunar lander docked to it, so we can't easily get that away. But let's transfer this stuff in here, since this one is sort of locked up right now. We could move the lander, but let's just keep it simple. The sound you hear, you might hear, of course, is the nuclear engines on the transfer demon. They keep making their sound. I guess, you know, what we could do is we could dock the other one over here, the new one over here, and then make use of this by scrapping it would probably be the best idea. So we'll keep it docked for now. Okay, we'll reserve that much fuel for deorbiting whatever's left that we can't scrap, which, um, well, we can, we can pull off the lights. Um, we could probably pull off two of the engines and that docking port. Okay, and docked. Come on, game. Yeah, it's a large complex. It's like a mini mirror or something. But, uh, alright, let's see what we can do here to simplify things. Who is our engineer? Megan. Time for an EVA. Let's see what Megan can do to simplify the situation. Inventory. Well, there's a drill. Equip. Uh, let's get this 
container. Okay, we can't open the inventory on the container yet. Okay, we need to get to that container and put these little ladder rungs back. Okay. I still need to increase the volume that Megan can carry. I think 300 is a little bit too small. I don't see a need for all these batteries, so disassemble. Okay, 45 units. Hold on, back up, back off, down. We're gonna have a lot of explosions around here. So, just for you to know. I'm going to disassemble this part. Yeah. But we're uh, we're getting the material kits. We got 45 for that. Batteries are sort of cheap, but maybe I'll just grab this one and put it into inventory for now. And same with the one on the other side. 45 material kits doesn't seem like that much. So we'll see what we need to destroy later. Um, this RCS port, I'm just going to disassemble. Disassemble. Seven for each RCS port. Symbol. Don't panic. Disassemble. All right, seven thousand. I uh, I'm not entirely sure I approve of the whole explosion for disassembly thing, but all right, we do what we can. These ladder rungs are there for a reason. I'll leave these RCS ports to help turn the station. We'll basically cut our RCS ports on the station itself in half. Uh, this can be disassembled. If we want to put solar panels on something, we'll probably want bigger ones than those. But they don't get much material kits. It's 0.19 units. I don't know if we really needed ladder rungs on both sides of this. Might have been too too much. Let me try and grab these Gemini Lander engines. La engines are expensive after all. It does mean that they give you more material kits, but still. Uh, 4,300 liters. Not much more. I'll store that. I wonder if we can, like... I don't think we can disassemble the battery pack. He's gonna take some extra volume. All right. No, not the container. There we go. Disassemble. Okay, and disassemble. Okay. Part count reduction continues in this explosive episode of Beyond History. Okay, one more Gemini Lander engine secured, but we'll just destroy the other two. But these RCS thrusters closer to the core of the station are probably useless. We have containment for 5,000 material kits, so it's quite a lot. We could do a lot of disassembly and still not fill up our little containers there. Okay, we'll leave the solar panels for now. Now we're going to try and take off what we can from this this uh, resupply vessel since we're going to destroy it soon. Okay, illuminators have been grabbed. You know, it could probably deorbit itself just with RCS. So.
I hope it's giving us good value for disassembling the the Vance Gemini lander engines. And this Apollo docking system isn't going to be useful for it. Okay, wow. Lots of explosions. And we'll just disassemble the other two illuminators. Yeah, I don't think they give that good a value for the disassembly. Two of the commutatrons can be disassembled, but I want to have the semblance of it having communication as it leaves. Disassemble. Okay. Well, it wasn't that much material kit, so I was hoping for more. But let's get back to the KIS container and put stuff away. There's obviously other stuff that we can take off the station, but let's deorbit this um, transfer pod for now. Okay, store, store, store. All right. Pretty full on that inventory. I don't think Mega needs to be in this lander can. Let's get her in more comfortable surroundings. Uh, maybe the science lab. That's pretty roomy. I don't think there's anybody in there right now. And it's close enough to the KIS container that if Mega needs to do another EVA, it won't be too inconvenient. Okay. Well, board. Board. Okay, let's take a look at how many parts this whole thing is right now. Might be a good thing to check. Okay, so Moonport 1 is currently 335 parts and 118 tons, but that includes many visiting vessels. So. That's, uh, we can't really destroy parts on the visiting vessels, but we can undock them. So that's what we're going to do with this pod right now. There's a tiny bit of food, water, and oxygen left in it for some reason. So it should be clear, it has electric charge, it has fuel for the thrusters, has a controller, and has two antennae, which is all it needs to be otherwise disposed of. I mean, I guess we could try and material kit all of the RCS and the tanks. But I'm not too sure how you even material kit the art, uh, the tanks yet. Let's just not do that right now. Let me just... I don't know. Do we have another? I don't want to send Megan out again. No, we've got three pilots and Megan is the only engineer. I wonder if you get better efficiency on material kits if they are leveled up. That's a thought, huh? I don't know about that, but that would make sense. And then we would want a higher level engineer doing all the scrapping, right? Hmm. Yeah, we might need to train them up a bit more. I don't think in 1.1.3 uh, they get skill points in flight, so... Yeah... Anyway, uh, let me just proceed with my intended plan and undock this and bring it down. I definitely think that we need to do this sort of thing on our Earth orbit station. Let me, after doing this, pop on over to the or Earth orbit station to check if we have an engineer there that would have uh, tools. Very important to have a drill handy. I don't know if that's required for disassembly, actually, but it's probably just for the best. Okay, let's see this smack into the surface. Technically, we should be able to get a seismometer reading or something like that, right? There we go out of render range of the station and everything is much smoother. Okay, here we go. I think this is going to be the hill of doom for it. Yep, impact recorded. Science report can now be accessed from one of the accelerometers. Um, maybe we should head on to that mini probe to check out 
the science. I mean, we've got a lot of science, admittedly, but hey, at least we can get something out of this. Okay, just got a little sidetracked here because I decided to look at the tech tree before turning to the probe on the moon, and it turns out we already have the RS-25D, and in fact I'll unlock it right now. And so I might redesign our uh, rhombus launcher based on this. What I ended up using was the J2s as well as the LR87 Hydrogen Edition. And I didn't want to use the, uh, the Hydrogen Edition of the LR87. I don't really like it. I really wanted to use the Aerospike, the J2T, but it was impossible. I mean, it, it was impossible because it's really horribly priced and uh, its stats are just bad. Uh, first of all, uh, if we take a look at the mass of the LR87, it's 0.74. The mass of this J2T is 1.4 tons, despite the fact that it provides the same thrust. Uh, well, I mean, aer aerospikes are heavy, so that makes some sense. But the problem here is, there's no net benefit, as far as I can tell. Uh, engine ISP is 300 at sea level, 435 in vacuum. Um, it reduces the sea level ISP on that configuration, so that's not great. Uh, we want high sea level ISP for this, and if we take a look here, um, yes, this is uh, better on the sea level, but worse in vacuum. But if we take a look at the other configurations, the one I used is this vacuum upgrade, which has 832 kilonewtons, practically the same as the Aerospike, but has 323 second ISP at sea level, 425 second in vacuum. Well. That's uh, only 10 seconds less in vacuum than this engine, but it's got a higher ISP at sea level. And it, uh, it weighs half the mass of this engine. Has the same thrust. So, and it's cheaper, which means the build time is lower. So, yeah, there are some problems here. <laughs> of course, none of this is nearly as good as the... the RS-25. Uh, the RS-25, uh, I mean, it's a bit heavy for the thrust that it provides, but its ISP is so much better at sea level and vacuum that it's sort of a no-brainer. So, yeah. And it's cheaper than the Aerospike still. Now, uh, some people have uh, added in, and in more recent editions of Realism Overhaul, there's an engine that was the precursor to the RS-25 that people can use. But of course, now that we have the RS-25, it's academic. We just go with this instead. So anyway, uh, that's just something that's coming up. I just wanted to point that out. Back to the moon and that one probe with the science that we want to retrieve. Okay, so here is our lunar mini probe, and it seems to be rocking about, perhaps perturbed by the impact of our supply vessel, but um, I don't know, is this the one collect impact data? Well, uh, yeah, uh, impact event which record, uh, was recorded, which caused seismic activity, 32 science. Well, might as well. And, well, that's that. Anyway, let's, let's move on. Let me check up on our Earth orbit station. Okay, well, we do have a KIS container there, and we do have Alan Kerman, the engineer. So let's just EVA Alan, and, uh-oh, uh, something has happened. I'm going to Alt F4 very quickly. Okay, so I, I restarted very quickly. Let's hope that, uh, okay, well, Jeb was dead. Um, it looks like Alan Kerman is still alive. That's good. So, I don't know what happened. Let's try and go to Spaceport 2 again. But it may have glitching problems. Granted, I haven't visited it in a while. But it looked like when Alan EVA'd, first of all, the the image sort of shifted to a... To a well, we didn't have the Spaceport there. So, I, I, the, the point of view was a little bit weird. And it also said that he had run out of food, water, and oxygen. Spaceport 2 food is running out. Okay, maybe he was just in a place where there wasn't any food, water, and oxygen. And so when he stepped outside, he didn't carry any with him. But otherwise, Spaceport 2, it says, has uh, 218 days of food, 5 years of water, and 290 days of oxygen. So, yeah. I, I would hope that that would be enough. Let's try again. I don't know. 
Spaceport 2. Okay, here we are again. Let's see, where is Alan? Um, Alan's inventory. Well, Alan is over here in the Apollo Command Module. And the Apollo Command Module does have uh, no food and no oxygen, and uh, but does have water. But let's uh, maybe move Alan. What location would be best? I think probably all the food, water, and oxygen is in the supply vessel. Well, oh, the numbers are all adjusting. Ah, that's probably the problem. All the attack life support numbers are in the process of adjustment right now. And maybe when we stepped out, it caused a glitch because those numbers hadn't settled down. So let's wait until those numbers have settled down. And then EVA Allen. I think that's probably the best option. I have to admit, I have no idea why we have this much water. The numbers are still adjusting, by the way, but I have no idea why we have this much water on board the station. And also why it's increasing still right now. I mean, the water capacity here is topped out at 18,000. I don't know why it's full. Now, you might think, well, it must be fuel cells. But I've checked all the fuel cells on the station now. And I've gone around, and they are all off, as far as I can tell. They all say activate fuel cell instead of deactivate fuel cell. There are four here on the Orpheus. There are four on this service module, and the service module itself has one inside. And that still says activate. There are four more on this service module, and this one also has one inside. And, uh, yeah. Not sure. Uh, and then there's this one. Activate fuel cell. Nope. Still all say activate fuel cell, which means that they're off. And of course, oh wait, this one says uh, deactivate. Oops, missed that one. Okay, well, I'll, uh, okay, uh, two of these were missed. But that's still weird because obviously we didn't have enough liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen to supply these two fuel cells. So were they producing water all this time even though they don't have the fuel to do so in which case that's obviously a glitch and a potential exploit if you will uh, so we've got about uh, 18,000 units of water of the worth of exploit there um, we'll, we'll make sure not to get any extra so I'll yeah well turns out that I did not have all the fuel cells off but part of the reason was because we have so many fuel cells on here which might be a good thing for Alan Kerman to now solve. So, first of all, I would like to move Alan to somewhere with a healthy amount of food, water, and oxygen. Or we could just pump, pump some in here. I think is a good way to go. Um, now, where might the food, water, and oxygen reside at this point? We obviously have some. I have to point out that our main solar arrays aren't exactly in the best shape. They're sort of disjointed. So that's weird. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Horrible things did not happen. That's a good start. Inventory. Ah, well, no... No drill or anything. So, here we go. We have to make our way to the KIS container first. We can see that there are a lot of spare parts on here that we don't need right now. Especially on the old Spaceport 1 side. All these tiny little solar panels can come off. And probably like half of the fuel cells. We don't have enough liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen containment to run all these fuel cells anyway. Oh, but I don't really have the material kit containment here yet. Hmm. Yeah, I should wait for that. But anyway, let's get uh, Alan Kerman armed and ready. Looks like you can disassemble part without drills, but I prefer Alan to actually have one. And we can still get certain items into inventory. I don't know how much space the 
the fuel cells take, but that's a good option. So let's see, too far. Oh, okay, so obviously to grab it we need tool. There we go. Alright, 40 or so volume for those, and maybe we can grab one of these advanced Gemini lander engines and another one. This is good. I don't I I don't suppose we can stack those. Not really. Actually, if he could grab two solar panels, that would be a good combination of things. And prioritize grabbing the ones on that side, because it might be good to just get rid of this semi-detached portion here. We'll have to undock the tug first. So I think I should quickly cook up a material kit thing for for this station. Oh, the volume of that is too big. All right, we'll wait on that then. But before I do that, let me undock the tug and place it somewhere else so that we can eventually demolish this unsightly portion of the station. Uh, actually, first, maybe stow all that stuff in the KIS container. We really need more and larger KIS containers, too. We should send food and oxygen up, but not water, and also a KIS container and material kits containment. So I think we can delay some of the other things that we were planning to build, like the Crewmaster, the next test of that, and the Nerva Refueler. We'll wait on that for now. And maybe I'll pull back on the Nerva Refueler and redesign it with the RS-25s anyway. But that'll require some recalculations. The combination J2... LR87 and actually also boosters with NK33s is a bit complicated. And it's not obvious how to calculate the delta V of it, so I wasn't even sure exactly how it would do as far as getting to orbit. I knew it was close, but maybe not quite there. The payload would have to make sure to complete it. But Anyway, we'll talk more about that once you see it, you'll understand. And why don't I quickly... Well, those lights might be helpful anyway. They are sort of shining on all this. I need to grab some of the stuff on here later, but let's wait until we've got more space to place, place stuff that we've removed. Also, I, I sort of want to restart and give the Kerbals more, you know, of their own inventory room, but I'll wait on that, actually. Because uh, maybe I can get the launch off without restarting the game. Okay, EVA complete. Not quite as explosive as as Megan's Around the Moon, but still uh, had some excitement. Alright, let's try and get that new module together and launch it. Actually, first I've decided to redock the tug so that I can proceed with those plans. So. We're just moving the tug to the other side of the station. Nothing too fancy. Uh, I'll be docking it to the science lab on that side because science lab is permanent anyway. So, yep. We're just moving it over. I'll only show you the rest if something goes wrong. Otherwise, I'll meet you on the launch pad with the next launch. Actually, instead of docking it to the space the science lab, I might want to put it there because not much else could fit there anyway, especially if it's using the Apollo docking system. Well, I guess the I guess the refueler vessels could still dock there. All right, I'll, I'll put it on the science lab since it's a more permanent thing anyway. Just considering where to put it because, you know, moving it is always a hassle.
Okay, well here we are with a combination resupply mission. Well, with just food and oxygen, no water because we have so much water on the station ready. And a large KIS container, much bigger than the one currently on the station, as well as containers for the material kits. So, throttle up, SAS on, and I'm just going to manually control it this time because I haven't uh, worked up the launch script for it in terms of when I have to look up when the boosters separate and all that. Um, I'll just watch it during this launch and see, though the time is already on because I have to time warp to line up with the station. Anyway, it'll make uh, rendezvous a little bit easier, though the station's getting away from us, so let's get on with it. Ignition. And launch. The water was actually the heavier part of the payload, so it's got a lot of thrust to weight ratio right now. The KIS container and the material kit containers are not very heavy because they don't have anything in them. Okay, separation. And the boosters are off. Okay, fairing separation. And that is what our payload looks like right now. It's actually thinner than the normal resupply vessel, and that's because of the size of the KIS container and the fact that it can't be tweak scaled. It's 2.5 meters instead of 3 meters, and obviously longer because that KIS container is there. Okay, getting close to the end here, though. We're gonna have a somewhat lopsided orbit. Alright, uh, 408 by 167. That should help us catch up anyway. Unfortunately, I couldn't leave this on a suborbital trajectory. We'll have to clean it up later. I also wasn't quite good at uh, checking out the relative inclination right at the end there because things were happening so fast as the thrust weight ratio was quite high. But anyway, let's separate and ignite. Okay. Well, closest approach distance is 1,771. Um, so that's good. That means two orbits, basically. Let's just get on with it. Okay, I've handled all the basic rendezvous business, and we're just lining up with the docking port. I'm going for the Apollo docking port next to the science lab, though it's a little bit of an interesting fit because we've uh, we've got some solar panels on that tug that cannot be retracted okay well it looks like we're reasonably clear of the solar panels so that's good at least they're not sticking directly in this direction okay well let's hope it fits right though it's still it should be okay but these boxes on the side here complicate the estimation. Okay, let's see how we pass these solar panels. Slow down a bit. Oh, we got caught, we got caught, we got caught. Back off, back off, back off. It's tight and also I'm worried about blocking the crew hatch there. There's another crew hatch on this side though. Okay... And we look to be docked. Alright, so that's our station right now. And uh, maybe I'll begin the next episode with our removal of all the things that we don't want on this station. Right now, uh, we've I've done uh, quite a few things. And it's taken a bit of time. So I'll save that for next time. That'll be EVA 3. Well, at least in this sequence. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy this video, please do press like, and I'll see you next time.